there, future nurse. Now, I know I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I bet you'll like this video. And if you do, be sure to head to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube for way more content than you can get here. And you can sign up for free. Now for electrolyte imbalances. In this video, we're going to be breaking down the top tested causes and critical manifestations or signs and symptoms of how our clients present when electrolytes are out of balance. And trust me, these topics love to show up on nursing exams and even the NCLEX. Now, some imbalances can be downright deadly. So just remember this test tip. The most deadly conditions are typically the most tested conditions. Since the main goal of nursing school is to create safe nurses who know how to spot when something isn't right. So before we break this down, let's review our main electrolytes and what they do in the body in this fun video segment. We're here at the red carpet known as the red blood vessel and oh boy, it's a busy one. We're all here just anxiously awaiting and anticipating the presence of the annoying electrolytes. And oh my gosh, here they come. First on the list is King Potassium at 3.5 to 5.0 microequivalents per liter. He's the king of action and contraction, especially in the heart and skeletal muscles, keeping each muscle cell charged or basically polarized via the sodium potassium pump. His slogan is, I'm the king of action and contraction, baby. He's obtained through your diet via fruits and green leafy vegetables, absorbed in the intestine and excreted out of the body and into the body via the bowels and the kidneys. He is one cool cat eye. King Potassium. And up next is Miss Salty Sodium, ranging from 136 to 145. Bloated beyond belief, always followed around by the water paparazzi because where sodium goes, fluid flows. Now, she is also a major cation in the extracellular fluid, that fluid outside the cell, obtained in the diet usually through salty snacks like canned food, processed meats, fast food, or basically anything a nursing student would eat. Let's be honest, you know it's true. Absorbed in the small intestine, excreted by the kidneys, her slogan is, I'm a leader, never a follower. Bloated is the new black. Be true to your salt, salt happens. But first, let me take a salty. Sodium's two main job functions are to maintain blood volume as well as blood pressure, and also to keep pH balances. She's kind of a big deal. Sodium's regulated by the ADH hormone, antidiuretic hormone, also known as ADH2O, because it holds water in the body. Aldosterone hormone, we call aldostyrone, the security bouncer in the kidneys, holds onto fluid by basically holding salt back. And lastly, she works very closely with potassium in the sodium potassium pump, which helps energize every cell in your body and also buffers out acid base imbalances. Now that was kind of quick. We go into full detail in the full videos at simplenursing.com, so please don't worry. Miss Salty Sodium, Salty Sodium over here, please, please. We have some questions about your recent takeover of the Cup of Noodle Soup Corporation. What is your relationship with Mr. King Potassium? Sources tell us sodium and King Potassium are deeply involved in what is known as the sodium potassium pump affair. Up next is Mr. Law and Order himself, Magnum Magnesium, weighing in at 1.3 to 2.1. He's the new sheriff in town, Big Magnum Magnesium, here to keep law and order in the muscles of your body. Without mag, we have complete chaos, complete disorder. So obviously his slogan is, there's a new sheriff in town. Do you feel lucky, punk? Well, do ya? Obtained through the diet via the spinach, almonds, and yogurt, absorbed in the small intestine, and excreted by the kidneys once again. He's a man with many jobs, but his main job function is to keep law and order in the muscles via protein synthesis, nerve function, as well as blood sugar control. Now, magnesium loves to flirt or stimulate the parathyroid hormone, which regulates calcium levels inside the cell. So obviously his BFF, best friend forever, is Mr. Calcium. Hence he is required for calcium and vitamin D absorption, which fights tooth decay on the daily by binding calcium to that tooth enamel. You mean right here or uh, right here? <laughs> I love you, Mag. Up next is the cocky jerk himself, cocky calcium from Muscle Beach, California, weighing in at 9.0 to 10.5. He's the most abundant cat ion in the human body. 99% found in bones, his slogan is, I'm the b b b to the bone, brother. 
He's obtained through the diet from fruits and veggies, almonds, and dairy products, but mainly green leafy vegetables. Absorbed in the small intestine, excreted by the kidneys. Now, sources tell us he has a love affair with vitamin D. Some sort of absorption web of lust and lies. Now, since he's a strong dude, obviously his main job functions is to make things strong. So guys, remember the three Bs. Strong bones, strong blood, and strong beats. Strong blood from facilitating blood clotting and strong beats in the heart. Anyways, he helps build job functions for his best bud, his BFF forever, Magnum Magnesium. Often when magnesium is low, calcium fills in for his best bud's absence as treatment of choice. Man, what a good friend filling in for his best bud when he's away. Lastly, he is regulated by the three hormones in the endocrine system. The PTH, parathyroid hormone, which increases calcium concentration in the blood. The calcitonin hormone, which does the opposite and decreases that blood calcium by putting a ton of calcium into the bone. Get it? Like calcitonin in, a ton into the bone. And third one, calcitrol, which controls the release of calcitonin. Basically, it reverses that ton of calcium in the bone and releases it back into the blood. And up next, wait, uh, could it be? Oh dear, it's Cocky Calcium's worst enemy, friendly frat boy phosphate. At 3.0 to 4.5, he's Calcium's worst enemy. Now, Calcium's always ripping on this guy, bullying friendly phosphate because he's so darn friendly. They are complete opposite and always work inversely. So whenever Calcium's high, well, phosphate is low, and vice versa. They don't get along, like, at all. And I think, honestly, because it's like, Cocky Calcium is all wrapped up in himself being like a big jerk. And phosphate's all like, bye Felicia. Absorbed in the small intestine and excreted by the kidneys. Phosphate's main function is to help bones and teeth formation and repair cell tissues. Lastly, phosphate is regulated by the same things that regulate calcium. So the PTH, parathyroid hormone, which controls calcium. Remember, calcium and phosphate work inversely. So if one's high, well, the other one's low. Last but not least on our list is Miss Four-Eyed Chloride, leveling in at 98 to 106. She's Miss Salty Sodium's forgotten sister named Chloride. Struggling to stay afloat during nursing school? Let me help you achieve our 96% pass rate by heading over to simplenursing.com forward slash YouTube and signing up for free.